Good afternoon and welcome to USS Bofin. Bofin is a World War II fleet submarine. She was launched on December 7, 1942 at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. She was given the nickname the Pearl Harbor Avenger. After commissioning in May 1943, she transited out to the Pacific where she made nine war patrols during the course of the war. After the war, she returned to the East Coast and was decommissioned. She got recommissioned for the Korean War and came out to the West Coast, but never deployed. She served as a training ship in the Seattle area through the 60s, and in the early 70s was uh, designated for scrapping. But through the efforts of the Navy League and uh, submarine force leadership at the time, she was donated to the Pacific Fleet Submarine Memorial Association. She's been on dis public display here in Pearl Harbor since 1981, and just this past spring we had our 9 millionth visitor on board. So let's board the boat in. Welcome aboard. Our fleet submarines were really designed to mainly operate on the surface and for short periods submerged to avoid detection and to conduct attacks. During our time in commission, this main deck would have been made out of teak wood, but since we've had her on display here in Hawaii, we've made this a metal decking so it'll last a lot longer. We're going to enter the ship into the forward torpedo room. Watch your head here. We are now in the forward torpedo room. The fleet submarines had six torpedo tubes forward and four torpedo tubes aft. When she went on a war patrol, she carried 16 torpedoes in the forward torpedo room six in the tubes ready for launch and another ten reloads in the room. In the aft torpedo room she had four torpedo tubes and four reloads so she carried a total of 24 torpedoes. into the torpedo room is the officer's shower and bathroom or head. And this kind of shows they had a fold away sink. Space is at a premium on a submarine. We're going to enter through this next compartment. This is the forward battery compartment. This contains the wardroom where the officers ate their meals and their birthing area where they slept. Everybody on the submarine ate the same food. Underneath this area was one of was a forward battery, 126 cells. And there was a second battery in the aft berthing area for the crew. The stateroom with one bunk was for the captain. He's the only one that had his own stateroom. Right next to the captain's stateroom is the ship's office. One man worked to maintain all the admin for the for the crew. We'll now enter the control room. So this station is where the helmsman was normally stationed when underway. He had all of the equipment he needed to steer the ship and to carry out the orders for speed given by the officer of the deck or the captain. One of the senior enlisted men would have stood watch at this station and he monitored the rig for dive on these panels called the Christmas tree boards. A red light on these panels means a valve was open or danger and a green light meant that the valve was shut or safe. 
when an order to, to submerge was given, this man would open these would operate these operators, and this opened the vents on the top of the main ballast tanks, and that vented the air out. Water flooded in from the bottom. The ship got heavy and went underwater. He maintained a constant status on the rig for dive of the ship so that it was ready to submerge at any time if necessary. When the order to dive was given, it set in, set in motion a series of uh, actions that had to be carried out in the proper sequence, and if not done properly, at risk uh, loss of the ship. Men practiced this and practiced this before they got into their patrol areas so that all of the watch teams had confidence in their ability to carry out the order to submerge in less than a minute. We're now going to go up into the conning tower. The conning tower is an eight foot diameter standalone pressure hole above the main pressure hole of the ship for all of the equipment to carry out an attack. So up in this small space is where all the equipment to carry out an attack of a, of a ship exists. <coughs> Excuse me. There's another helm station so the helmsman could be closer to the captain so he could immediately respond to his orders for course and speed during the course of an attack. Above the conning tower is the hatch for the access to the bridge. Up here in the conning tower is all the equipment needed to carry out an attack for the ship. This is the ship's sonar system. Radars, two periscopes, one of which will be used at a time, and in the back corner, back uh, port corner, is the torpedo data computer. Our submarine force had an advantage of overall over all the other submarine forces with this piece of equipment that maintained and updated a firing solution to our torpedoes up until the moment of fire. This was a significant advancement and gave us a big advantage in, in our ability to attack uh, and rapidly respond to course changes by enemy convoys. When an enemy was sighted, this plotting station would be used and based on the information available through periscope observations, radar information, and, and sonar, the, the team would uh, identify the target solutions and then uh, plot their attack plan. When ready to fire, the torpedo tubes were monitored from here as they were loaded. Would be lined up for a standby, either a forward tube from this six or from the four aft tubes. And when the firing order was given, this plunger was, was pushed and released and that would launch the weapon. Most of the successful attacks during World War II were carried out at ranges of less than 1,500 yards. Our submarine force only comprised about 2% of our total naval forces during World War II, but were responsible for sinking over 60% of the Japanese merchant shipping and over 30% of the Japanese warships. It came at a prevy price. We lost 52 submarines and over 3,600 men during World War II. And both in here is a as a living and breathing memorial to all those men and ships. We're going to climb back down from the conning tower, back into the control room. Proceed from the control room. The radio room is going to be right inside this plexiglass door. I'm going to go through another wire type door and enter the galley and cruise mess. Submariners had some of the best food in the Navy. 
And this small galley was manned 24-7 when the ship was underway, preparing four meals a day. This is where the crew ate their meals, and underneath this space is a dry storeroom and chill box where frozen stores were, st were stored. The ship would go out, loaded, to stay at sea 60 days. Right aft of the mess decks is the main crew berthing area. Underneath this uh, deck is the second battery well of 126 cells of batteries. So at night on the surface when the diesel engines were running, the batteries would be being charged and men would come and go in, in and out of this hatch. So this was a busy place. This is the main passageway through the ship. After the berthing is the crew's heads or bathrooms. And the next compartment is the forward engine room. Two of the four main diesel engines are in this compartment. The diesels, this was a diesel electric submarine, so the diesel engines operated a DC generator that produced DC electricity for the power of the ship and to move it through the water. Also in this compartment are two vapor compressor stills and these made fresh water for the crew. But the priorities for the water for were to keep the battery cells watered and to have pure clean water for the galley. compartment is the aft engine room. Two more main diesel engines in this compartment. Each engine was 1500 horsepower and both of them had to be on the surface for our engines, their diesel engines to run. So anytime she was submerged she was strictly on her battery power. Underneath this deck is an auxiliary diesel engine so that a all four engines were needed for propulsion, main engines were needed for propulsion, she could charge her batteries. Next compartment is a maneuvering room. All of, the, all of the output from the diesel generators came into this cabinet, and operators at the at the aft end of this cabinet align the output of each generator to charge the batteries or to provide propulsion. Up to 1.2 million watts flowed through this cabinet when the ship was at full power. Electricians mates who were specific, specially trained operated the equipment back here with all the po ship's power coming through here. This was a very important watch station. And finally we enter the aft torpedo room. There are four torpedo tubes aft and four reload torpedoes for a total of eight in the aft torpedo room. As in the forward torpedo room, there are extra bunks back here, so as the torpedoes got expended, more bunks became available. And these actually were some of the prize bunks for the crew because they were out of the out of the main flow of traffic through the birthing compartment. We'll head back up onto the main deck.
most of the major Japanese shipping had been, been destroyed. And as we advanced on the main island of Japan and were able to carry out airstrikes, submarines' missions changed. A lot of submarines participated in uh, rescue of uh, flyers who were downed or ditched their disabled aircraft. One of our future presidents, George Herbert Walker Bush, was rescued by a submarine. This five-inch deck gun was used to, to engage small merchant ships not worthy of a torpedo. We'll climb up on, up to the bridge. Does it say that? Yeah. Up on the surface, the senior man in charge would have been the officer of the deck. He would have been manned up here at the forward end of the bridge. Lookouts would have been on both sides of the bridge. And most ships sent men higher, even in calm seas, to get a better height of eye to see further out on the horizon. When the ship was on the surface, the safety of everyone on board was in the eyeballs of the, of the lookouts and then carrying out an effective search. The order was given to submerge. The goal was to be safely submerged in under a minute. The officer deck would initiate the order from up here and all of the men would then head down. Some of them had to come down from the shears, down in through the hatch, and the officer deck had to count the heads as each man went down, and he was the last man to go through the hatch. He pulled the hatch shut and, and made a report, last man down, hatch secured.